Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. It is a beautiful Saturday morning and I'm up super early because it is officially yard sale season here in New England. Yard sales, tax sales, garage sales, whatever you call them, there are a ton of them going on in my area. I was up late last night doing the research and not only do I have a list of well over a dozen of them, I found several very promising prospects for comic books. So I have my iced coffee, I have my list. Let's hope we get lucky and find some comic books. All right, guys, I'm super early, but I know they have comic books. I know I'm a little early. Can I look at things, or I don't want to... Oh, you can, but nothing's out really. Okay, I was just going to check out these, though. Oh, those are comics? Com yeah. Clips. Modern. Yeah, gonna look super close here. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what you yeah, it's all mostly modern stuff, huh? Do you know uh, what, what he wants for them? I'm going to have to just text my daughter oh. because he went over everything with her. And <laughs> that was early. It's my fault. It's fine. Trying to get it. All right, I think there's about 350 or so here. Just doing some quick estimations and counts without really knowing exactly what's in there. Let's see if I can make an offer on all of them. All right, I think we have a deal on these, but uh, there's some more stuff coming. I might want to wait for. So, let's see if I can get a bundle for some other stuff. Okay, we can do that. We also have some magic cards here. Alright guys, pretty successful first stop of the day. Alright guys, I was able to get all of those comic books plus some magic cards for my son at a pretty darn good price. And hey, that was just the first stop of the day. Let's keep it going. Alright, and just next door, we have another yard sale. So it's sort of a town-wide yard sale here, so let's see what we can do. Alright, we have some golf clubs, some decoys, poker table... Boogie boards. This is for a sunroof. <laughs> helmet. That's cool. So I think I forgot to mention that this first town I'm starting in is incredibly rural. I'm in the middle of nowhere in sort of west central Massachusetts. And when you're hunting for yard sales in an area like this, you know, the signs that point to where they go they're putting you miles out of the way. It's not like if you're in a suburb where, you know, you can just drive around a neighborhood and see multiple places right after each other. So this is taking a little bit more work than say, you know, if I was outside of a city, but still sometimes these are the ones that pay off because smaller towns mean less shoppers. Let's keep going. And this one had a sign saying yard sale. Uh, yeah, I think I see something. <laughs> hmm. Last. I think there he is now. Okay. 
props, tapes. All right, I didn't find anything there, but I did get a hot tip on this town-wide yard sale they have on. Uh, basically, there's a map I can get, and they told me the location of that map. So I'm gonna go and get a literal roadmap of all of these yard sales, and hopefully I can find some more good stuff that way. I still think I'm too early, but uh, let's see if we get lucky. Hey, is there a list I can get? Is this the map That's of the... the yeah. Alright. Take... Cool. Toys. 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 Mm. Cool. One dollar donation for all this stuff. All right, so I finally got my map of all the uh, yard sale locations with all the addresses, so that's pretty handy. And uh, most importantly, scene. I don't see anything here, but it's worth looking. Hey. Yeah. This looks awesome. If I can fit it in the car, I definitely want it. <laughs> all right. Cool. Of all the things I thought I would see in Western Massachusetts today, emus were not one of them. <laughs> All right, here is the last yard sale in this town that I know of. And uh, it's in a farmhouse way out in the middle of the woods. So uh, yeah, hopefully we get lucky here. Ooh, fresh eggs. All right, cool. So this is Orvis, you said, right? We don't show the year, but it's bamboo. Good shape. That is an awesome, awesome find. So that was definitely a worthwhile stop. Uh, amongst all my other hobbies, and I have many, uh, I love to fish. Specifically, I love fly fishing. And because I go to lots of flea markets and yard sales, I find old fly rods all the time, and I'm pretty good at fixing them up. But that one I just found was an Orvis rod, really old, bamboo in incredible shape. Uh, and I got it for $10, which I think is absolutely a deal and a half. So this was the last yard sale in this town, but I did see of another one about a half an hour away that not only had lots of collectibles I'm interested in, they did show they had some comic books. So it's a little late in the morning now. They probably have already sold them, but you never know. I think it's worth heading over there. I think it's a pretty good gamble. So uh, see you there. Here, some silver. <coughs> yeah, the sun though. Hmm. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, there's a that is a bucket full. Empire. Reprints. Eight. So 
about to say, some of these come with cards. There you go. All right, I think I definitely want to pick up this one here. Two bucks for all these? Two bucks each. All right. All right, guys, out of that entire collection of comics, there was like 350 of them, although I could have made an offer on all of them. They're not really titles that I collect, but I did get one comic book, and I think it's a pretty darn good one. Uh, so I have a pretty busy day uh, planned with the family, so I'm going to head home right now. Uh, of course, unless I see a yard sale or two on the way, but otherwise, I'll see you all back at the house and show you what I got. And action. Uh, one of my favorite things I got in the whole day, it cost me $1, and you all know I'm going to get a lot of mileage on this gimmick on the channel. Uh, so that was my morning of hunting for comic books at yard sales in rural Massachusetts. And the reason why I was in this town to begin with, well, there was really two reasons. One, I did hear some rumblings there might be a town-wide yard sale, which wasn't saying much. It's such a small town, there were only eight houses on the list. Uh, but the other reason was, you know, doing my research, I saw there were a couple of places that may have good collections of comic books. And uh, yeah, you know what I do the night before, guys, every Friday night during the summer, I'm up late, you know, going on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace, sometimes even Craigslist. Yeah, that's actually a thing. Trying to see where all the estate sales and yard sales are, and I try to see if there's any comic books. I knew there were two locations. I thought they were worth checking out. But it was sort of the tale of two collections, right? Because although they were roughly the same size and maybe the same value, I thought only one of them was worth taking home. And take it home, I did. I have the whole thing laid out upstairs on my dining room table. And uh, let's just say there was a lot more comic books in there than I thought. So I can't wait to show them to you guys. But before I do, the next thing I want to talk about is not a comic book. People have brought this up to me in the past. I always say that I collect things other than comic books. And sometimes people want to see them. And I got lots of little things when I was out and about, guys. I got something for, like, my wife for the garden. And I went to a ton of yard sales, way more than I showed you in the footage. I went to, like, over a dozen of them. But one thing I definitely have to show you is that fly rod. Now, again, I know this is a comic book channel. No one cares about a, a fishing rod, but just bear with me. Indulge me for a moment because I think this is pretty cool. So uh, I do know a little bit about fishing rods, and I know you know older ones can be quite valuable. And I saw this fishing rod. It was made by Orvis, which was founded in the 1800s in Vermont. Uh, and you know when I first saw it, I thought maybe it was from the 1920s. Well, I didn't really look at it too closely. When I got home, I was able to really uh, scrutinize it, and I was able to find the serial number and the year. It's not from the 1920s. <laughs> it is from 1882. Yeah, it's over 140 years old, and it's in pretty great shape. It's missing one small piece on it. Uh, but still, guys, that's pretty nuts. Now, the thing with fishing rods is they can be worth a lot of money, especially fly rods. But... Oddly enough, the older it is doesn't necessarily mean it's worth more. In fact, most fly rods are only good from like the 40s or 50s, maybe the 30s are the ones that are the most valuable because you can use them. You know, they're really well made and they last a long time. If you go older than that, they're really old, they're brittle, they're warped, they can break easy. So because of that, um, I think this rod is only worth maybe a couple hundred dollars, but I got it for 10 bucks. So uh, the reason I'm bringing this up, guys, is because this is the other stuff I do in the background. This is how I kind of fund my hobbies and stuff. I'm always finding stuff like this. Uh, the biggest problem I have with this one, I don't really want to sell it. I want to keep it. I want to fix it up and I want to use it. So uh, maybe this one stays in the collection, but I thought some of you would enjoy that. All right. All that being said, guys, I have all the comic books set up upstairs on my dining room table. Let's put on the camera mount and let's go through the whole thing real quick. All right, guys, here you see all of the comic books I got on this morning laid out on the dining room table. Uh, it took me, you know, over an hour to go through them all. I sorted by publisher, then by genre, then by title, and then by number, and kind of went through and pulled out the ones I thought were the most interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go through this quickly because uh, the boss is not going to be happy I'm using up this table. So let's go quick, starting with this one book right here. So this is the only book I got from that second collection you saw, and you pretty much saw the whole extent of it. The owner said there was like 300 books, lots of Disney, lots of older Disney, lots of the uh, new animated, you know, movies. There's lots of, you know, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Aladdin, things like that. Uh, he had Indiana Jones, he even had some Star Wars, but he had a lot of these Magic the Gathering comics. And I remember these from when I was a kid, and here I am going to date myself. Some of these came with cards or packs of cards, and you see here, this one came with a booster pack of Magic Fallen Empires. Now, some of these older packs from the early 90s can be worth a lot of money. However, what is true of this set now is true 
back then, um, it's pretty much worthless. It's a terrible set. It's always been a terrible set. Uh, still, I, for $2, guys, I thought it was pretty cool. I'll crack this open with my son. Seemed like fun. But that means everything else you see here, I got out of that first collection. I went through it really quick. As a matter of fact, what you saw in the footage, that was the extent of me looking at it. I didn't cut any footage. I was counting like kind of like in groups of 10. I thought there was 360, but man, was I wrong. I'll explain why I screwed that up in a second. Uh, but let's start with the Marvel ones and my favorite title, X-Men. And this is what really got me excited when I saw these in the box because although there are some here that I absolutely already have, I've been saying that I'm filling in my entire X-Men run and I'm missing a lot of the stuff from the late 90s when I didn't collect. And here's the crazy thing. For an X-Men collector, all of these books I'm showing you right now, Uncanny X-Men and the regular X-Men series from the late 90s, I don't have any of these. None of them, uh, except for this one. I do have this one because it's a cool Nightcrawler cover, of course. Uh, I do have these ones here, but yeah, we go down to X-Men number 100 and on. Uh, great cover, by the way. I have none of these. So that's actually pretty amazing, guys. Uh, these are all immediately going downstairs into my collection. I do have some of these other X-Men titles like Astonishing X-Men, Love the Age of Apocalypse, X-Men Forever, X-Men, you know, True Friends. I know nothing about that. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool, guys. I'm very excited. And if this was all I got, uh, I'd be happy. But I got a lot more, obviously. We get some Wolverine comics here. We can get some Barry Winter Smith Weapon X. Uh, you know, we get some X-Factor, Excalibur, things like that. We have a lot of Cable. Uh, so that's Cable's uh, first ongoing series. We have not only the first issue, but we have a pretty good run uh, of that series moving on. And we have a lot of Cable-related comics. We have X-Man, number one. Uh, so first appearance of X-Men, who is basically the genetic uh, identical to Cable from a different dystopian timeline. We have the first appearance of Strife, who is his clone as well. Uh, we have Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, number one. Now, this is pretty cool. This is a four-part series where Cyclops and Phoenix go to the future and they raise their son, Cable. Uh, yeah, and actually, people who watched the X-Men 97 season finale saw some uh, seeds of this storyline in it. So pretty cool there. And uh, yeah, staying on the Cable thing, we have Cable and Deadpool, Civil War, three issues. Uh, yeah, the team up of this classic duo here, and these are pretty funny. I think I'm actually going to read them. They're very cool. So I got a lot of Cable in there. Uh, happy with all that. Uh, but yeah, it keeps on going, guys. We have lots of Daredevil, one of those uh, characters that's one of my favorites. Absolutely, again, you know, spanning decades in this case. Lots of Fantastic Four, all 90s stuff, nothing great. Tons of Avengers, uh, you know, Avengers and Avengers related characters. So, you know, I got Captain America. Actually, this is a funny one. This is a uh, first appearance of Americop, kind of like Robocop. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, so we have, of course, you know, Captain America. We have Iron Man in here. We have Hulk. Uh, we have Thor. We have a ton of this Thunderstrike, who was another, you know, sort of Thor Jason character in the 90s. Here's all the rest of my random Marvel, and this is all over the place, guys. We get Eternals, we get Hawkeye, we get Sheena, we get Darkhawk, we got Punisher, Moon Knight, uh, everything. We got some ROM, Space Knight, Guardians, we got Namor. That's like the most 90s cover I've ever seen. Uh, everything, guys, you could possibly imagine is in here, including lots of titles I've never heard of before. Oh, lots of good reading material, like modern books that are not bagged and boarded. I might dip into these. So yeah, these are all over the place. The one I do want to talk about is this one. Eternals number 13 from 1977 actually is the first appearance of Gilgamesh. Uh, Gilgamesh is, you know, an Eternal that I think a lot of people saw in the Eternal movie. Uh, yeah, pretty neat. Uh, just thought it was kind of, kind of a fun little key there. Let's move on to DC, and there's a lot of DC here. Let's start with the man himself, Superman. Uh, most of this stuff is 90s stuff, the reign of Superman. Uh, this is after, you know, Superman, you know, died. And we had all these different versions like, you know, uh, Steel and the Cyborg and the Superboy. Uh, yeah, so I get a ton of these, right? All from the 90s. These are kind of fun, especially if you grew up in the 90s like me. And then these are all like the more modern ones. We have a couple of these action comics, uh, part of the New 52. These are actually sketch variants. You see the price tag still on them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, tons of modern ones. Yeah, the thing in this collection that there's a lot of is like the super size issues, right? So we have a lot of like 80 page giant size ones, 100 page, things like that. Uh, and a lot of these Superman confidential. I know nothing about this series from 07, uh, but it actually, you know, I have more coming up. So uh, let me know if you know what these confidential issues are. So let's talk about Batman real quick. So we have some 90s Batman, of course. But most of these, yeah, are these, you know, from 07, these Batman confidentials. Again, let me know down in the comments, guys. The only thing I saw was pretty cool. Sam Keith did the art on some of these. And, oh, yeah, absolutely Sam Keith right there, right? Unmistakable. Uh, so I thought these were pretty cool. We even have some pretty cool Joker covers on the bottom, which I thought were kind of fun. Gotham City Sirens, right? There's a mask in this one. Uh, so, yeah, this is the Batman. We also have, you know, Batman adjacent, you know, like Nightwing and Batgirl and Batwoman are up here. Uh, this pile is great. So this is a Justice League pile. But this first comic here is awesome. So this is actually Justice League Quarterly number 8 from 1992. And it features pretty much the Justice League International 
national team. And you see here, this is an homage to X-Men number 100, the famous, you know, uh, Dave Cockrum cover of the old team fighting the new team. Except, of course, this is DC, and you see the uh, Justice League International going up against this new conglomerate. And even some of these characters look like Wolverine and Cyclops. And who did this cover, an homage to Dave Cockrum's X-Men 100? Dave Cockrum. And you see here he wrote After Me, meaning he's homaging himself. Also, oh, Terry Austin inked it. So how cool is that, guys? I'm absolutely adding this to my X-Men collection. That's great. Uh, we have other like uh, associated Justice League characters here, right? So we have some Green Lantern. This is a pretty cool issue right here at number 188. Um, not only uh, does this have an Alan Moore story in it, but uh, it's also the first appearance of a living planet. Kind of like Marvel has Ego. They have one. I think his name is Mogo. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, uh, I think it's a first appearance of Mogo. Uh, yeah, we have some other, you know, Green Arrow. We have uh, some Wonder Woman. That's a great uh, cover in the George Perez run there. We got some Aquaman. Uh, we have a lot of Flash up here. Uh, some of these are modern. We have, you know, Flash Rebirth number one, All Flash number one, some of the Wally West stuff uh, right from the 90s. Uh, yeah, pretty cool there. Uh, and uh, the rest of the stuff here is assorted DC, and this is all over the place, guys. We have a lot of modern... Blue Beetle Rebirth number one, you know, again, modern stuff, we get some Doctor Fate, New Teen Titans, uh, Hawkman, uh, Firestorm, yeah, just completely random stuff. Uh, down the bottom, though, is some pretty cool things I wanted to talk about. We get a reprint of uh, first Hal Jordan Showcase 22 there, I might read that. Uh, this seemed pretty cool to me, this is like a graphic novel with some fantastic art in it. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to read that. And then we actually have Watchmen number two. That's pretty cool, right? I'm a fan of that. Uh, so that's pretty much all the DC and Marvel, but we do have one more that sort of fits both. We have a DC Marvel All Access number one. It's part of a four-part series. And uh, yeah, this is a DC Marvel crossover. Yeah, in any comic book where you can have, you know, Superman throwing Venom, uh, you know it's one I'm going to read. So pretty great. All right, now we're moving on to the indie. And guys, there are so many here. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Anyone who buys big collections, you find all this 90s stuff all the time. But there's some pretty cool ones in here. We do have this Dark Rivers number one, really early uh, Max appearance here. But, you know, of course, we have Sam Keith, Jim Lee, and Rob Liefeld. We get some Spawn in here. A uh, whole bunch of those, you know, first issues, you know, chrome covers that everyone thought would be worth a fortune. Wildcats, Wildstar, stuff like that. Lots of Shadowhawk. <laughs> Tons of Shadowhawk in here. Uh, but it's actually this pile that's pretty cool. So this is Image United. And this, was, I think, was 2009, 2010. And the idea behind this was all of the founders and people who worked on Image Comics were getting together to basically unite all the characters. And you see who's on here. We have, you know, Kirkman, Larson, Liefeld, McFarlane, Protasio, Silvestri, Valentino. And yeah, this is a pretty cool series, although I don't think they finished it. We have a zero issue. We have the first issue. But the second issue is really interesting because what they did is there was a whole bunch of covers you could put together. So I only have, you know, these ones here, uh, cover D and cover E. However, there's one more. It's this one. This is uh, Image United number two. This is cover A, and this features the McFarlane Spawn. And evidently, this series and the second issue is the first full appearance of Omega Spawn. Now, I don't know my Spawn, guys. I don't know who Omega Spawn is, but in looking up you know, this comic book, I found out it's worth a little bit of money, like, like tens of dollars. Uh, so I thought it was pretty cool, considering it's not a book I really would have uh, looked at very closely. But yeah, I thought it was pretty neat, guys. Uh, you learn something new every day. We get all of our Valiant here. You know, we get Ninjak and, you know, the Deathmate Valiant image crossovers. You guys all know this stuff here. Uh, we have some other publications. We have DW Transformers from the early uh, 2000s. More on the Transformers later. Independence Day, we have some Green Hornet. This Dynamite one here, I think is a Alex Ross cover, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we have some IDW. We have ROM, who I didn't even know uh, IDW published a series of ROM. So that was pretty cool. Uh, again, a lot of titles I'm not sure about. We have the random pile up here. We get some Dark Horse. The only Star Wars book in here was this one. Uh, we have a Terrible Tales of the Twisted, uh, kind of a horror comic. We got some Bone in here and a whole bunch of random stuff, guys. Uh, there's no limit to the amount of random uh, that you can find in these comic book <laughs> bins from the 90s, right? So all sorts of crazy stuff in here. You never know. Which brings us to the manga. So manga made up a huge proportion of this collection. I think there's 111 of them. And honestly, guys, I don't collect or read these. I don't really know what they are. I organize them by sort of genre and publisher as best as I could. Uh, but I do know some friends who are really into this stuff. I sent some pictures and they freaked out. They said there's some really cool stuff in here. So let's just go through them really quickly. We have some uh, Comico right here. Now, I mentioned that I shorted myself on how many I thought were in here, and this is why a lot of these, you know, Japanese ones, uh, manga-inspired comics were doubled up. 
you know, two issues per bag. So that's why I miscounted by quite a bit. Uh, but you see these comical ones? Yeah, Robotech's pretty cool. I have some friends that are into it. Uh, a lot of this Viz Manga publisher, um, some more, you know, giant robot stuff here. Again, lots of stuff. I don't even know what they are. We have Eclipse Comics up here. Area 88 looks like some pretty cool, you know, fighter jet stuff. No idea. Head on down to the comments. And let me know if you know what any of this stuff is, guys. I'd love to educate myself on this, but uh, there is a lot here to go through. Uh, this I have heard of. This is My, the Psychic Girl. Uh, this is published by Eclipse. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, but I know some people really love this series, and I have a ton of them as well. Uh, this pile here, <laughs> my buddy Ben, uh, when I sent him pictures, uh, freaked out when he saw Venus Wars. He's like, I want all of them. No problem, Ben. Uh, so yeah, these are all these uh, Dark Horse comics. Again, lots of titles I never heard of, like this Caravan Kid Tons of these are in there. Uh, this is just completely random. And this, this is a lot of the, again, that, you know, Viz Select Comics. This is Ranma, Mermaid's Dream. We have, you know, Silent Mobius. No idea what these are at all. Some of these I do know a little bit about. They're kind of like uh, Kung Fu. They're definitely adult themes uh, because I've seen them in the past. Uh, this pile is really cool because this is still Dark Horse, but these are these Super Manga Blast, and they're huge, 128 pages. Uh, all black and white manga from you know, multiple different stories. Uh, and you see there is a huge stack of them. I think there's like a dozen of these things. And I could imagine, you know, uh, if you're stateside, this might be one of the, you know, best ways you can get multiple stories. Pretty cool. A couple other, uh, you know, stories down there as well by Dark Horse. Um, and then we come to the uh, last pile here. And again, this is just a completely random. I didn't even recognize a lot of these publishers here. We have Eternity Publishing, uh, a couple other Viz ones, of course. Just random, random stuff. But uh, what I think is really cool about this one is the last couple ones at the bottom are by Antarctic Press. And I found something really cool. I found this. So this is, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but this is the world of Japanese fanzines. Uh, it's from Antarctic Press 1992. And you see it is the Transformers. It is Optimus Prime fighting Megatron. So uh, my interest was peaked. I put this in a new bag and board. I'm going to take it out and show it to you guys really quickly because what it is is, uh, again, it's a Japanese comic book, but it actually has English subtitles. Yeah, how do they do that? They do it like this. So you see they number all of the word bubbles and then they tell you what it is at the bottom. Uh, and because, uh, you know, <laughs> it's uh, dubbed, like, you know, a lot of the Japanese films that we watch and it's Transformers, I just thought this was awesome, guys. I don't know what it's worth. I just thought it must be pretty cool and not seen very often. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Quick editor's note, about an hour after I filmed this, my good friend Ben came over to look at the manga and he was like a kid on Christmas. He loves this stuff. He went through the collection, educated me on it, and even found some books worth some money, like this early mobile suit Gundam. And at the end of the night, he took a lot of this home and he was a pretty happy guy. So, uh, you see, I got a whole collection here. How many books are in here? Well, originally I thought there were 360, but when I was done counting, it ended up being that there were 471 of them. 471, and how much did I pay for them all? $90. So I try to aim for about 25 cents or better on these, you know, big bulk comics. It ended up costing me about 19 cents each, which is pretty great. So let's go downstairs, and I will real quick debrief on this whole collection and tell you exactly what I'm going to do with it. And action. Uh, this is not going away anytime soon, by the way. Uh, yeah, so that was the entire collection that I got. Almost 500 comic books for $90, 19 cents each. I think that's a pretty good deal, but I know what some of you were thinking. Mike, there was nothing good in there. There was a lot of junk. There was no one big key issue that made it all worth it. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, but sometimes you need to buy a lot of stuff you don't want to get the stuff you do want at a really cheap price. And uh, guys, almost all those X-Men books are going directly into my collection, right into my runs. A lot more I'm definitely keeping lot more reading material I'm excited to dig into, and most of those mangas I've already spoken for. I have some friends who are really interested in them, and they're probably going to give me a little bit of cash on the side. Uh, so I think it's already a great deal, but even then, whatever's left, I'll probably throw it in like a 50-cent bin or something next time I'm selling at the flea market. Maybe give them away. Who knows? I still think it was a great deal. I've definitely done worse for $90, you know, out hitting uh, yard sales for comic books. But I'd love to hear your opinion. You know, head on down. Let me know what you think of the collection. Which books did you like the best? Do you think I paid a fair price? Also, let me know what your stories of comic book yard sale hunting are like. Uh, kind of the same, you know, kind of not really great stuff, mostly from the 90s. Or do you have any of those big scores that we all dream about? I'd love to hear your opinions down below. And forget the comic books for a second. I had a pretty successful morning in general. I got stuff for the family, for my wife, for the kids. I didn't even tell you about all these uh, magic cards I got for my son. There's some pretty good cards in here. I got them all for less than $10. And by the way, when I was filming upstairs, my son was literally waiting in the other room for me to finish uh, filming so he could crack this pack open. And believe it or not, 
he got the one card in this pack that he actually wanted out of this set. It was like it was meant for him. Uh, and by the way, that's to say nothing uh, about this right here. Uh, this might very well fund some future lunch money comics. So who knows? Uh, but that's it, guys. Head on down below. Let me know what you think of everything. And uh, yeah, that's it. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places like really rural town-wide yard sales. Thank you all so very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.